Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's a little badass truck. You playing with squirrels? I took it. Took it mudding yesterday. <clears throat> nice. Or, not, not yesterday. Was it? No, it was yesterday. I took it mudding yesterday out to a buddy's place down in uh, West Virginia. I want some old, uh, uh, some old roads that used to be used by the uh, railroad company. And they stopped using it and stopped maintaining it and stuff. So it's all rutted out, pitted. Got a couple of deep holes and some mud mud pits and stuff and. Got back there, went riding around with a couple of buddies of mine, and fucking absolutely loved it. I didn't even have to go into I didn't even have to go into four wheel drive, and Damn. I'm talking holes that were covering the fucking hood of the truck, and it was just rolling right through it. I was like, "Fucking hey, this is awesome." <laughs> you know, the worst, the worst part I see about going muddy is the cleanup after the fact. <laughs> I, it didn't get too bad. I mean, I got some a little bit of mud on the sides, but that's about it. That's what it was. Right, now, I, I want to talk about what, what Kirk was talking about yesterday in her live feed on her Facebook. Go ahead. Jump on in. And before we jump into this, this right here is for everybody. We're trying to extend a helping hand and get a point across at the same time. Yeah, I well, I... I have a point to my side of it and the way I see it. And uh-huh. I agree with a lot of the stuff that you said in your video yesterday. Uh-huh. That if people, more people in the better community would start helping out with each other instead of talking about their own independent thing, we as a community get a lot better. You're breaking up, brother. Hey, hey, whoever's got the background noise, mute your phone. That took care of it. Sorry, I had to cut Keith. Keith, man, I'm sorry, dude. I had to cut you loose, dude. You wouldn't. When you roll your windows up and you get in a quiet spot, call me back. (laughs) Uh, But back to what I say, I mean, as, as far as like, you know, groups. You know, doing stuff to help vets, that's awesome. That's great. You know, it's its much appreciated, much needed, much, you know, cared about and cared for and everything else. But the problem that I've been seeing is that, you know, independent organizations within the veteran community are only really out to help themselves. They're not out to actually help vets. Not saying all by any means, but there are a lot that are out there just because they want to get their name out there. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. So they're going to promote themselves in the worst way. Yeah. Now, that being said, and and like you know, it goes back to what you were talking about yesterday. If we could just fall every fucking aspect of every nonprofit out there that's based to help vets under one flag, under one fucking banner, to where we could actually make a difference. That would be phenomenal. Why? Because you're going to have every possible aspect of resources there. Instead of having to sit down on a computer and searching th- from website to website to website to website to website trying to find information. And nine times out of ten getting rejected and saying, well, go talk to this person. And then it's kind of a chain effect. Then they say, go talk to this person. Go talk to this person. Go talk to this person. It's a never-ending effect. And I've seen it. Keith, dude, you oh gotta mute God. your phone, so man. Loud in your fucking car, dude. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> like I left. Fuck it. There, there, <laughs> there is a there is a source of credible resources, which mean they have been looked and verified. It's called the Green Light Vet Network. Now, yes, some of them there are resources in there that you get normally get VA stuff and whatnot, whatnot. But there's a lot more into it than just that. It also goes down to state specific. But I understand what you're trying to go with that. Well, there was, a, uh, it was about, I don't know, uh, two, three years ago uh, when I first moved into the place I'm at now. Thank God that, you know, I, I, I found the person that I'm with because once I found them, things slowly worked out and got better. A lot fucking better. Better than I could ever, ever imagined. But before she came along, it was like I was I was behind because I, I when I moved into the house I moved into, 
the landlord worked with me. They're like, well, we know you can't afford the full down payment for the deposit and the rent all at once. We'll break down the deposit and go from there. And you can, you know, you pay an extra three to 400 on your paycheck or on your, you know, from your check, you know, to your, your rent or whatever. And we'll go from there. So at the time I was getting about, let's just say 1500 bucks. Um, by the time I paid rent electric, and a, a little bit of food for me to eat on through the week, which it was mainly rice and beans and, you know, little smoked sausages or a summer sausage or whatever. I, I was left with maybe a hundred bucks to last me the entire month for c- cigarettes and gas to get back and forth to work. And right. I was trying to reach out to anybody and everybody I could to get, you know, the help that I needed. And even in my local community at the, the veteran service office, I couldn't get shit done. Nobody could help me. It was always go here, go here, go here, go here. If there was some, like, you know, and that's my point. If there was something in place to where it was a multitude of groups working collectively together. Keith, you got to mute your phone, dude. All right. All right, but if there was a, um, a multitude of, of, of groups working together under one banner, uh, a group that had, uh, you know, financial backing as far as being able to help with certain things and, you know, intelligence backing as far as, you know, trying to get, you know, through the fucking bullshit paperwork with the VA on your own instead of having to go and get an attorney or any number of those things to help each other. Because I can tell you right now, when I went to my attorney, my attorney wrote up a fucking 13-page letter with all these articles and rules and regulations that the fucking government set up that I had no clue about. And if I would have known about, I could have wrote the damn thing myself, slapped it in their faces... And not had to worry about paying a you know a VA attorney ten thousand dollars out of a seventeen thousand dollar settlement. Right. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. <clears throat> the problem, I think, and I go, I get where you're coming from, but I think most of the problem that we have today is that, um, and this is my thing, we have way too much infighting in the veteran community. Instead of helping each other and sharing each other information and working together as a team, which we all know how to do because we're all fucking served. So we all understand, you know, put your personal crap aside. This is for another veteran who might need this. We're not doing that. We're bitching well, it, at it, each it's other. That and know? it's well, it's that, but it's also the me factor. It's mm-hmm. it, they want every, everybody want to make everybody wants to make it about me or my organization or my donation or it's there's always a my to it there's never a we or as a collective an us and that's the biggest issue but i i think i think what we do have to offer is the we factor um we just have to get other veterans to understand we have that we factor and that people can be a part of the team they can be a part of the i I, I agree a hundred percent you know, there's room for all of us to, um, there's room for all of us to be able to put our stuff out there. Like I put, I linked DGN's page to, uh, the, uh, group I made. I'd like other people to link their pages to the group so that they could come on and post per their group when they feel like it, um, Simply because that makes it easier. It keeps that fresh in their mind. Oh, I have that resource. Oh, I have that resource. Although yeah. I'm going to put the resources in the file page that we, we have so people can go back and look at them. And I'm going to save posts and stuff like that. I still want our uh, our community to start working together. And I don't care who they are or what their thing is. But if it's for, you know, like <clears throat> DGN. DGN has the ability to, uh, in the future, make some money. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's not. And I don't understand people who have a problem with that. I don't get 
why DGN, why people, you know, why Dangerous Grounds is is a problem for other people actually creating a a valid brand product, that and a valid productive income for the people who work hard to put this quality shows out there for them to listen to. Mm-hmm. So why why is that an issue for anybody? And hey, who are you to tell me what kind of lifestyle I should have? So or if, religion? Or well, yeah, or religion. Yeah, that was pretty funny. But I mean, but if I if I'm the kind of person that wants a million dollar home because I have a lot of things I like to do with it, I'm not. You know what I mean? Like that's not really my thing. But if I was that kind of person because I like to entertain, I like to let people stay in my house, blah, blah, whatever the case may be, you know, whatever my fucking thing is, if I'm doing it to be a productive member of society, why is anybody judging me because I, I want to have the resources and the funding to be able to give to any community I want to give to, to do all those things that I like to do? And get paid at the same time. Why does anybody have an issue with that? That's what boggles my mind. We're out there oh, telling agree. each other telling each other we should be poor. Why? Why should you as a veteran have to sit around and be poor because you're a fucking veteran? And I, I agree. And the other thing with that is this is the fact that okay like you said, DGN has the potential to make money and become a self sustaining entity on its own accord. And people outside of our community, you know, as far as the people that, you know, the host, co host, you know, the text, you know, owner, whatever, you know, aside from all of us, and somebody's knocking us because we have the, the chance and the opportunity to do so, is the only reason why they're bitching is one, because they're fucking jealous. Two, it's, <clears throat> it's bigger than them. And that's what they don't understand. When we're able to actually start making money to go into DGN, then we're going to be able to make money to help people that listen to DGN. You know, somebody calls in and says, hey, guys, I need some help. I got a flat tire or, you know, my tires are bald. I need a new set of tires. Can you guys help me out in any way, shape or form? Yeah, let's fucking buy you a brand new set of tires. Go to Walmart. We'll get you hooked up. Right. Or, you know, something like that. And that's, I'm theoretical. I'm, I'm not saying that's what it's going to happen or, what, or, or that's what it's going to be. I'm just using it as an example. You know, once we're able to get to the point where we can make money and self-sustain the radio show and right. do things, that's no different than, and I, I'm, I'm, I hate to put out names, that's no different than Grunt Style. That's no different than Nine Line Apparel. That's no different than, you know, some of the stuff that John Burke does or... Uh, Drew does with his organization. It's not that there's no difference there. The only difference is, is they're hating on us because of personal reasons. And it's bullshit. It's childish. If you don't fucking like it, shut your fucking mouth, move the fuck on, and leave us the fuck alone. Otherwise, step up, man up, come and tell me to my fucking face, and we'll deal with it with, as a grown, you know, grown ass adult. In the fucking street, bare knuckle. I give a fuck. I will give you my address. 1410 Bennett Schoolhouse Road, Willersburg, Ohio, 45694. You want my fucking number so you can call me out? 740-285-8002. Fuck you, kiss my ass. Let's go. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and um, so Ghost has been heard from. The Ghost Man Speaketh. <laughs> I'm just tired of the bullshit, honestly. We're supposed to be a family... Yeah, you got little punk ass bitches wanting to fucking cry around the goddamn mouth. Love you, brother. Quit, Love quit, quit going behind people's backs and crying about shit. Step up like a fucking man or a grown ass woman, like you claim to be and are supposed to be, and Love go toe to toe. Love you, bro. Love you. Well, yeah, know. and and I I I agree with what you just said there wholeheartedly because um, you're like I don't give a shit. I'll give you my number and my address. Fuck you. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I, I think what I, what I would like to uh, add to that, and I know you don't give a fuck, but we all have to, we all have to stay a little bit calm, because we're talking at each other instead of talking with each other. 
And I get where you're coming from, dude, because you have a right to be angry for the stupid shit that's being done behind people's backs. I got it. 